Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're reviewing the Harley Benton MP5MN Enhanced Series. This bass looks the part on paper, but is it really a solid instrument? Well, let's find out. This is the Harley Benton Enhanced Series MP5MN, featuring a P-style pickup with large single poles as opposed to the doubled up pole pieces that you find on a regular P, and a large Stingray-style humbucker down by the bridge. This bass also has a two-band preamp on top of that. Not bad. And that's in a solid swamp ash body, paired with a solid maple neck, and a maple fretboard with black block inlays. You have a high quality bridge. This is actually the same kind of bridge that you see on the Reverends and the FGN bases. And you have a truss rod adjustment wheel over at the heel of the neck. So you can adjust this neck on the fly. Very convenient. The fingerboard also has a black binding that goes all the way around, which is a nice touch, especially for the $350 price point that this thing's at. That's right, you can get all this solid swamp ash body, maple neck, block inlays, two band preamp, humbucker, and a P pickup, all for $350. But is it too good to be true? Let's find out. Oh. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Okay. This is a heavy bass. This one actually weighs in close to 11 pounds and you feel that heft when you pick it up. This is not a lightweight instrument by any means. I'm also finding it to be rather neck heavy. Whereas the Harley Bentons that I've tried in the past, including that Stingray and the Rickenbacker-esque instrument, were relatively well balanced. But this one is uh, quite a bit neck heavy. You feel the mass down here by the headstock. I also noticed that there is a bit of a satin clear coat drip or something. There's just an uneven drip mark and you feel it right over here. It's just a little bump. Kind of bugs me that the Fit and finish of this is actually worse than that of the $120 Stingray Harley Benton, which I raved about because it's a great instrument and you'll be seeing that again soon with the preamp, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. But this thing though, I'm already not super impressed. Let's go ahead and plug it in. I am noticing a mild bit of hum. That was with both pickups on and the preamp centered, and it doesn't sound terrible. It sounds a little bit muffled in my opinion. It doesn't really sound that clear, a little muddy. Now let's go ahead and check out the neck pickup first. I think that's the culprit there. I'm getting a little bit of noise from this P pickup. And the humbucker is silent, so I don't know what's going on there. Might be with this push-pull knob, might be a cheap one or something, I don't know. but. Uh, this does have a push-pull volume knob to bypass the preamp, and that's what we're going to do first, and then we're going to go ahead and check out this preamp a little bit. So, here is the neck pickup, the P pickup, with the preamp bypassed. Mm. 
muddy and muffled, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really digging these pickups thus far. Let's go ahead and move over to the bridge pickup, the humbucker. And that is completely silent. Okay. So the feel of the instrument itself isn't bad. The neck feels good, just like that four-string Stingray-esque bass that Harley Benton makes. It's easy to navigate and it just, it feels good. Uh, the B-string feels nice as well and sounds pretty clear, but the electronics here are just very, very muffled and muddy sounding. Let's go ahead and bring the neck pickup back into the mix and check out the CQ a little bit. Beep, 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 beep. So here's both pickups with the EQ centered. Now let's go ahead and cut the preamp entirely. So here's the preamp at full cut. Now let's just bring the treble up to center. Even centering the treble control and cutting the bass does not really add any clarity. It just adds a bit of noise and not a lot of character in these pickups here. The feel of the instrument itself, again, is great. Uh, the wider string spacing, I believe this is 18 or 19 millimeter. Let, let's check it. <clears throat> this appears to be 19 millimeter spacing and I do find it decently comfortable. With better electronics in this, I think this would be a solid workhorse slash mod platform. Uh, if it was a little bit lighter at least, but at 11 pounds and at $350 plus shipping, this is a harder sell as Harley Benton offers cheaper and in my opinion, better bases. Now let's go ahead and boost the treble to about 50%. Oof, yeah, that's not doing us any favors. <laughs> See what this P pickup sounds like. It sounds a bit harsh, honestly, especially for a P pickup. Uh, with a P, you kind of want it to, I don't know, be a, a little bit smoother and uh, warmer, and this doesn't really sound anything like that. Let's go ahead and bring the treble control back to about, I would say, half cut. So halfway between the notch and all the way down, and let's bring the bass control in and center that. Now let's go ahead and check out the bridge pickup with the bass at center and the treble halfway cut.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and center the pit. I'm gonna go ahead and, I go on gas. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and center the blend, center the preamp, and we are going to go ahead and bring in our friend, the Beat Buddy. Hi Kitty, yes, and you too. We're gonna go ahead and bring in our friend, the Beat Buddy, and see what this thing sounds like with some drums behind it. I'm not liking this bass, honestly. <clears throat> I find the weight of the headstock a bit distracting when I'm playing up and down the neck, as I can't trust that the neck is really gonna stay in the same place as I'm navigating the fretboard. Um, the body itself is a bit heavy, and it is definitely, you feel it in your leg as you're sitting down with it. And I imagine you'd feel it in your shoulder as well if you were standing with it and using a strap. So here are my final thoughts on the Harley Benton MP5MN Enhanced Series. I think that this bass on paper looks really, really tempting. And especially given the reputation of Harley Benton with lower end instruments for being relatively high quality. My Harley Benton Stingray, as well as the Harley Benton Rick thing that I had, were both relatively high quality for the price that you were getting. Honestly, I was impressed. Uh, the Stingray especially, for being a passive instrument, it sounded great and it played great. And for being 120 bucks, it was great. This thing, however, is $350 and then you have the shipping cost as well. And for that much extra money, that's almost three times the cost of the Stingray thing that we have. Is it worth it? I don't really think so. The build quality and quality control that I see on this instrument is worse than that of the lower end instruments that I've also had in my stable here. I find these pickups and this preamp to be muddy and not really great sounding, whereas the Stingray pickup that was in the $120 Harley Benton Stingray thing sounded good. It actually sounded really good. So I'm disappointed at these pickups and this preamp, especially for an instrument that's three times the cost of those other Harley Bentons, or I would say two to three times the cost. Another disappointing thing is the pickup size, as the smaller part of the P pickup is actually the four string size. So not all replacement P sets are gonna fit in the space without modifying the pick guard and the pickup route on the body. Some may fit, I haven't looked at all the replacement P sets. I was originally planning on modifying this base, but after sitting with it for a while, I'm really not digging it as much as I was my other Harley Bentons. This thing is heavy as well, again, tickling 11 pounds. And that heft on the body, as well as a lot of that weight sitting right on the headstock, makes it not that comfortable to play. So on paper, I mean, this looks like it has it all, but in reality, I'm not really impressed with the quality of this bass. And at the 350 to 400-ish dollar price point, factoring and shipping, there are a lot of other options out there for that price that will give you a more complete package than what this instrument has. And that's disappointing because I expected a lot from, uh, from this Harley Benton and I was disappointed. So what am I gonna rate the Harley Benton MP5 MN Enhanced Series? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rate this bass. Two claws out of five at nearly three times the price of the Harley Benton 
Stingray copy thing. Does it offer three times the value? No. In my opinion, it offers less value. This thing is heavy, not really weighted well. The electronics are muddy and don't sound great. Uh, as a foundation for mods, I wouldn't even consider this because just the stuff that you're getting for 350 bucks right here, plus shipping, um, isn't great. It looks like it offers a lot, but in reality, the stuff that it does offer is not high quality. And I'm let down by this instrument, and so is BB. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Harley Benton Enhanced Series MP5MN. And as always, until we groove again.